This video is to demonstrate how to set up and operate the 406D static decay meter. So first we're going to plug in the cables. First of course we have the power in. And one thing we want to mention about the power in is that there's an internal resettable fuse which means if there's a power surge and the power inside the unit cuts off you need to turn the power off wait 20 seconds or more turn the power on and the fuse is reset next we're going to plug in the interlock cable which comes from the cage bottom here now this cable is notched at the top and the notch here is in the 12 o'clock position so you want to make sure it sits in there nice and easy next we're going to plug in the sensor connector that comes right from the sensor cable this too is keyed and make sure it's keyed in there correctly and then I'm going to turn this and the cable goes in and seats in there very nicely next we're going to plug in the ground cable which comes from the cage bottom to the ground then we're going to plug in the high voltage which also comes from the cage make sure this plug goes all the way in and seats in nicely now we're going to show you the cage setup. Inside the cage here we have the magnets and the clamp electrodes here. We're going to now plug in the STM2. Now notice there's a bent plate at the top and bottom. They sit into the grooves of the electrodes, the top and the bottom. Make sure they're in both grooves of the upper and lower electrodes. And you're going to go ahead and put the magnets on. And also too you can put the clamp electrodes in as well. It's not necessary to use the clamp electrodes for the STM2 but we're just doing it uh, for demonstration purposes. Also note some of the older units have the STM1 which has a plug that goes into the bottom of the cage you have to seat that in there all the way down for it to operate correctly but all the newer units will have the STM2 so the cage is set up also we want to note that the sensor when it's shipped to you is already in the proper position so now we come to the unit itself uh, we, we power it on and the unit comes on. We have some LED lights on, the display is turned on. First we're going to focus on the high voltage section of this unit. We have your charge voltmeter and we have the high voltage section of the unit. First we're going to depress the positive high voltage button. Notice the high voltage adjust is turned up to close to the maximum and we have 5 kV coming out of the high voltage unit onto the electrodes inside the cage. Also note that when the high voltage is on we have a red high voltage LED that's on. Just also notice here as I turn the high voltage down the charging volt meter, meter will also correspondingly track it. So we're going to turn it up to about 5 kV. Now we're going to switch to the negative high voltage just to show that it is working. But before you switch from positive to negative or negative to positive, always turn your high voltage off first. Notice the negative just goes in the opposite direction. High voltage LED is still on and so this is functioning correctly. We're going to turn it off. We're going to go back to the positive high voltage and again 5 kV. 
Next we're going to come and actually do a test. So we come over to this section of the 406. And first we want to look at our zero standby. Zero standby is just what, that, what it says. It's waiting and standing by for us to start. So we have a corresponding zero standby LED. While it's in zero standby mode, notice the sample charge meter here should be set to zero. And we do that using the zero calibration knob. Now if I turn this clockwise, notice the sample charge meter goes to the positive direction. If we turn it counterclockwise, it goes into the negative section. So what we want to do is put that at about 12 o'clock position and the sample charge meter we want to read exactly zero on the meter. So that means the zero is set. Next we're going to come to the charge. We depress the charge button. Notice uh, the LED comes on that corresponds with that. Also you heard a click. That was the sensor opening up to see what's on the electrodes. So we're seeing with the sample charge meter what is now on the electrodes, which is about 5 kV. So notice here if I turn the full scale knob adjust, it's going to vary the gain of the sensor coming into the unit. So it's going to change what that looks like. What we want to do is match up the charge voltmeter with the sample charge meter. So whatever's on the electrodes, we want the sensor to see it with this meter. So right now it corresponds. We have 5 kV here and this is 5 kV. We want to verify that. Go back to zero standby. Make sure this is back to zero again. Hit charge again and it goes to 5 kV. Just as an example, we turn the charging voltage meter down to about 3 kV. Notice the sample charge meter tracks it to about 3 kV. Let's turn it back up to 5 kV and actually run a test. So I'm going to go back to zero standby. We're going to hit charge and since we're in the manual mode we have to manually depress the test button. Now Notice when we hit the test button, the test LED came on right away and then next the test over LED came on after it completed the test. And In this case it reads about 0.62 seconds. Now our cutoff is at about zero, is at zero percent cutoff right now. So we just did an actual test of the unit. Now just to show you the negative side, we're going to turn the high voltage off turn the negative high voltage on. Again make sure that we're in zero standby. Sample charge meter is at zero. We're going to hit charge. It reads about 5 kV and we're going to hit test. And again notice this LED comes on first. And we're also reading on this side 0.59 seconds. So the negative side is reading about the same as the positive side. So what we want to do now is demonstrate the use of the auto mode to run the test in auto mode. We're going to leave it in the negative high voltage position just for the test. So to run in auto mode we're going to depress the auto mode button. We press this button down. Now auto mode is when you have a color indicator here. So in this case it's white means we're in auto mode. Uh, next we want to adjust the amount of counts we have in auto mode. In this case it's set to 3. So you can adjust it to 1, anywhere from 1 through 9. In this case we're going to do 3 tests. Also notice this LED now comes on when you select auto mode, this display. And this is going to display every time you run a count or run a test. So in this case it's going to go 1, 2, 3. In auto mode all we have to do is select charge and it's automatically going to run through the test onto the test over. So let's do that. So notice it cycled through the tests. Also notice it stopped after three counts because we had it set to three. 
and for each test it ran it displayed the decay, the decay time for each of the tests. Next now we want to focus in on is this interval select which basically is the amount of time between each test. So I'm going to set that to about 5 which means there's roughly 5 seconds between each test. So we're going to run the test exactly the same way but notice there's going to be a delay between each test. Notice we have a slight delay now before we go to the second test. And again we have a delay between the second and third test. So that completes the cycle test. One thing to keep in mind with regard to auto mode is that you don't want to put it at zero. If it's at zero and you hit charge, it's not going to do anything. Zero standby will go back to, but if you hit charge, it will not run the test. So you have to select one through nine to actually run a test in auto mode. One more thing too about the cutoff select. You must choose 50, 10, or 0% cutoff, whether you're running auto mode or manual mode, because if you don't select one of these cutoffs, it's going to give you faulty readings on your tests. So you must choose 50, 10, or 0% cutoff. That completes our demonstration of the use of the 406D and also how to operate the 406D.